How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode here on NHL 24. Headed today into episode number four, the 2024 draft and off season. Our first official full off season at the helm of the Vancouver Canucks. It's set to be an exciting one. We're ready to make a big splash. We're ready to make some big changes. And I hope that you are as well because in the last one, it was an abysmal postseason. We got EA'd big time as in Round number one, we faced the wildcard Chicago Blackhawks after having won the Pacific Division, our first time winning the division in over a decade. But the Blackhawks, with their team of 80 overalls, they had Bedard at an 88, they had Hall at an 85, Seth Jones at an 87, and the other 15 skaters and two goaltenders were all 82 overall or below. So we really got EA'd big time. Our scoring did not come through. Somehow their third liners and fourth liners were just going on. And Peter Dominic Hashik Maracic just went on a tear and we couldn't break through him. The one player who could break through him though was Elias Pettersson who gave us very very much but way too late as he scored 10 points in five games incredible but he really only turned it on in the last couple of games as I believe he had if I'm not mistaken three or four points in the first three games and then he finishes with 10 points in five games so he did great but it was unfortunately too late. Kuzmenko and Hughes also went point per game. Miller and Kessel four points in five games fill the thrill. Look at that with his plus five. Amazing. Amazing. Besser, three. Now we're starting to get down over here. Hironik, only a couple points with a negative four. Philip Dano, only two points and a negative three. We've got to make some changes for the coaching, perhaps, this offseason for that second line. Atrocious plus minus. Hoaglander, no points in five games. And the goaltending, Thatcher Demko, fell apart. In his three starts, he went 0-2-1 with an 861 save percentage and 4.39 goals against average. Against the 77 overall, uh, Roos on the third D pairing. And and you got, who else was in there? Like Tyler Johnson. It was ridiculous. 4.39 goals against average in three games against that that kind of team. Casey Smith came in. His first win was a shutout victory, but then he lost in overtime in game five. But a 9.52 save percentage and 2.15 goals against average from DeSmith. He's definitely trying to get himself a good contract this offseason. But it's in the past. We're trying to wipe it away from our memory and move on. But before we move on, I just wanted to highlight some of the hilarious comments left in the Discord server. Like this one from Super Loser that said... Make a save or invent time travel. Thatcher Demko. Is that not how it seemed? You know, with like his four and a half goals against average against that Blackhawks squad? Come on now. That's how it really felt. So thanks for illustrating that, Super Loser. And as we all know, Pat, one of our assistant general managers, is a Vancouver Canucks fan. So Cam left a comment saying, Pat, stay safe up there. The riots will be crazy. And Pat says, I'll be safe. I live in Ontario, but thanks for looking out. And then Gritch said, well, actually, I live four hours from Vancouver. and I'm on my way to the riots right now. Gritch, I saw you out there in the streets. Thanks for contributing, buddy. And just as a side note, if you make a meme about something that goes on in our franchise mode series, I will do my best to find a way to get it into the episode. But that being said, you know, looking back on the year that was, honestly, there were a good amount of positives, mostly coming from the regular season. Kuzmenko went point per game. Pedersen, yes, 75 points, but in EA land, take it with a grain of salt. Brock Besser had a career season. Uh, Quinn Hughes had an incredible second half of the season to end with 56 points. Still not a ton, but a great second half. Hoaglander had a good season, getting some middle six ice time. But Colson picked it up a little bit, but we want to see more from him. But, you know, we want to see more from JT Miller. We want to see more from Philip Dano. And just in general, we will want to see more from this team moving forward. As in year number one, to win a division and then lose in round number one, that's one thing. All right, we haven't been in the postseason in a while. It was the third time in the last, what, 11 years we made the postseason. All right, shake off the rust. But now in year number two, 2024-25, expectations will be higher. So headed into this offseason, there were a lot of comments in the last one, especially about potential pending free agents. Many commenters, many assistant general managers had thoughts about getting a top six playmaker. If we look at forwards and uh, UFAs who may be available, when we look at some of the names out here, we see William Nylander, we see Sam Reinhardt, who is from Vancouver, we see uh, Tara Vinen, who was injured for a lot of last season. He had 30 some points. He had 32 points in 37 games. So there are certainly some options for us, not just in free agency, but at the draft if we want to consider trading for the rights of some players. 
Now, the biggest thing to keep in mind headed into this offseason is that we need to self-impose the Oliver ekman Larson buyout. In the game, the buyout penalty sits at 147 k I'm not sure how long it'll sit at that, but that buyout amount was only for 2023-24. As you can see on the screen here, in 2024-25, it's going to be $2.346 million. And then in 2025 and 2026, all the way to the end of 2027, it'll be over $4.76 million. So we need to self-impose that restriction upon ourselves. So would it be great to go out and get Nylander for $10 million, extend Pedersen for $10 million, get Hironic for $7 million, get another top six forward, top 4D? I mean, yeah, for sure. But we need to keep in mind that we have players who need contracts. We have Kuzmenko expiring the year after this one, Besser expiring the year after this one, Thatcher Demko the year after that, and that $4 million, $2 million buyout is not going away really anytime soon. So although the salary cap this season, as you can see in the bottom left corner, will be $89 million, when it comes to our own salary cap, we need to remember to keep it at $86.653 million. So that will affect us even more the year after this one when that becomes over four and a half million. So when it comes to signing players, we're gonna have to really keep that in mind. So as we look to begin the off season now, we'll start by diving into the comments from the assistant general managers, starting off with Tic Tac who said, heartbreaking way for it to end, but a great first season. I would look to prioritize the top 4D situation. Hughes and Hronik are nice pieces, but they need some help, especially Hughes, who struggled without a steady, reliable partner. Hughes had a really tough postseason. He was on the third pair by the end. He was like, what, a negative six at one point? It was really tough for Quinn Hughes. I'd squeeze Hronik for a cheaper deal, as he's currently a restricted free agent, as right-handed Ds are very rare and he fits well. Looking forward to a fun offseason. The future is bright. Thank you for that tic-tac. So the two RFAs that we have to deal with this offseason on top of the rest of the UFAs that we'll have, we do have put Coles in, but we can get to him a little later. Elias Pettersson and Philip Hronik. Pettersson, it was discussed, does Elias Pettersson want to sign long-term in Vancouver now? I think what Elias Pettersson wants is is a competitive team. Not necessarily a team that's gonna go and challenge for the cup every single season. Every player wants that, but realistically not every team can do that, even the best of teams. I think what Elias Pettersson wants is to know that if he's committing to a team long term, it's a team that will be competitive for the duration of the time that he will be there. And I think this season winning the division proves that. But worst case scenario, even if Pedersen does sign, you can always add it to the storyline that he does demand a trade in the future. I don't think Pedersen would want to risk not getting paid nine and a half or 10 million to push it one more season to say, I don't know, maybe I'll want to test free agency when he could lock in his AAV right now of a a very big number but in the back of his mind still know that he may ask for a trade if this team were to go downhill over the next few years so I think Pedersen can definitely be extended in this episode doesn't mean that he's locked in to stay in Vancouver not necessarily but I think at this age with these performances that he's had instead of risking it on a one-year contract just to squeeze a little bit more he'll get his big payday this offseason Philip Peronik also wants a big payday at an 87 overall we're definitely not gonna be paying him nine and a half million but if you can qualify him and squeeze him a little bit and bring him down into the six and a half, seven million range, that would be very much appreciated. We like Philip Ronick. We want to keep him very much so. If he's going to be a 50 plus point guy every season, he's worth like the seven, seven and a half million. But at the same time, it was just one really good season. Historically, he's a 35, 40 point guy. So we'll do our best to get the most realistic and, you know, satisfying deals as possible for these two players and see what kind of money is left over. There'll be a lot of UFAs, a lot of spots in this lineup to fill. And of course, as we said, we want to look at adding a top six forward and kind of solidifying the defense a little bit so that not everything is on the shoulders of Hughes and Hironic. So we'll hop over to Super Loser's comment now as Super Loser says, Hey Data, great episode despite the disappointing result. Here are my off-season thoughts. In my opinion, the biggest weakness of this team is the lack of playmakers. I don't think we had a single one in the lineup and that obviously has to change. One free agent that stood out to me is Sam Reinhart. He's 87 overall, he does have some X-Factors, he's still fairly young at 28, and he's from Vancouver. He checks all the boxes and comes with a hometown storyline bonus. Also keep in mind that he was a legend in our Columbus Blue Jackets franchise. He was the captain of our Blue Jackets team, was it back on NHL 21, 
and he is a Data782 Hall of Fame nominee. If he's not available, Wenberg and Teravainen are other options, though they are older and worse in terms of overall than Reinhardt. I would also explore that trade market to pick up a second playmaker after that. As for the re-signings, we could think around 9.5 million for Pedersen, I think that would be fair, and looking at Hronik, probably something around, you know, 6 to 7 million, as I mentioned earlier. Super Loser would also let Beauvillier walk and would want to re-sign Casey to Smith as, you know, in EA land, if a goalie simulates well, you want to hang on to him, but it'll depend on what kind of price tag we're looking at. As for the draft, I would trade up to take Caswell or Paraskak. Seeing as how our prospect pool is pretty dead, a medium lead guy would go a long way. And we have a chance to do so this season without having to trade into the top five, as we see medium elites are around the 10 to 12 range or so in the draft class. Lastly, I would only change the coach if the guy you're hiring is higher rated. I know the playoff run is disappointing, but the guy just led the team to their best regular season in a decade. Do not get rid of him unless we know we're getting an upgrade. That's all from me. Good luck and go Canucks. Thank you, Super Loser. For the coaching staff, that's pretty much the one area in my franchise mode series that I really don't care too much about realism or holding to the storyline too, too much unless, you know, we can. If we can't, I don't really care because since the coaches will never change their preferences to align to how their players are. Pedersen could stay here for 20 years and he'll always have a bad fit with this coach no matter what, because that is the case in this sadly broken coaching system. Even if the storyline doesn't fit, I don't really mind hiring and firing coaches. Whichever one becomes available, if he's better for our team, he will be the guy that gets the offer. So if we find on July 1st an A- minus or higher rated coach who has a better fit with some of our stars, then we will be going after that that coach, even though Galena gave us technically our best season in a long while. So just a casualty of the broken coaching system. Sorry, buddy. Moving on to JJ Canyon, who said, all in all, a disappointing playoff run still caps off a great season. It's been a while since the Canucks have had a season they can really build off of. Good point. The forward core is missing just one more piece, in my opinion, that top line right wing. Besser did very well in that position this season, I will add, but long term, I see what JJ's saying. I think the growth that Podkolzin and Hoaglander showed was promising, and you should let them fill out the lineup with Podkolzin as left wing two and Hoaglander as right wing three. They're low risk, high reward options, and you won't be able to find any options that are better and just as cheap. While someone like Nylander would be nice, I think with the OEL buyout penalty, he'd be too expensive, but he'd still be my dream option. Someone like Reinhardt might be better to round out the top six, with Kuzmenko, Pedersen, Reinhardt, and then Podkolzin, Miller, Besser. I would say don't forget about Phil Deno either, which is why Podkolzin would probably be on the third line, but it would depend on off-season growth. Reinhardt's also from Vancouver. I'm sure he'd love to play for the hometown team. For the defensive core, I would not trust Ronix 87 overall, since he didn't go up to high top four potential. He still has medium top four potential. Therefore, I would not go above seven million for him and lean more towards the six to six and a half range. Lastly, the goaltenders always follow Murphy's law. If you don't re-sign to Smith, he'll win 44 games with the Blackhawks and post a 928 save percentage. If you do re-sign him, he'll go 888 and get replaced by Silovs in the minor league system. So I would give Silovs a chance. You're really going to have to save every penny. So it's going to come down really to what Casey DeSmith is asking for. As for the draft, go for O'Brien. He's going to simulate like a beast and can for sure be a top six staple. If you develop him right, his shot is going to end up in the mid 90s and score 40 goals a season. In data we trust, excited to see what you do. JJ, thank you for all those thoughts, my friend. So a couple comments now that I've mentioned some prospect names. We pick at number 25 in this draft. As you can see, there are some medium elites here at the top. This guy's interesting here. Uh, Purala is a generated prospect who's medium elite and he's going to be NHL ready which is very good he's probably in that 77 to 80 overall range Iginla's medium elite Caswell's medium elite and we drop down some medium top sixes now at our selection at 25 there is Caden O'Brien he's not your average medium top six who's a 65 overall and three years away he seems to be better than that with a plus shooting and one year away from the NHL he's likely in that I'd say 70 to 74 max overall range yeah something around 70 74 and to be a power forward with a plus shooting and pretty decent stats in a c minus league despite being lower down in the draft class at the bottom of the first round o'brien would be a great value pick 
if we could find the value to trade up and get a medium elite, let's say at number 14, as opposed to the usual having to trade up to the top five or top six, that would be very valuable as well, as that does not come around very often. So we'll have to see what kind of picks teams are open to trading because there's not a lot deeper in the year number one draft. A same, you know, couple that with not having the greatest scouts and not having done a ton of scouting in our first season. Usually we have the top two to 250 prospects fully scouted and we will moving forward. But this past year, that wasn't really the case. So this year, the value that we personally have for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks would be less than usual. So if we use those in trades to try and move up for another first or late second, whatever it is, it this would be the year to do it. I will go ahead and end it off with Pat's comment now, who really summarized a lot of what we had to say in just a few sentences. Tough to lose to Chicago, but I would consider the season a big win. 100% re-sign Pedersen. Just give him 8 by 9 Don't give him any of that 8.95 retail price foolishness. Qualify Heronic and the few RFAs, and then let Beauvillier, Chatfield, etc. walk. All the expiring guys can be re-signed for less later or replaced easily. Definitely go for O'Brien in round one of the draft. Excited for next season. Pat, thank you very much. And thanks to a lot of the other assistant general managers who left comments. The average comment last episode was probably like a good paragraph longer than the usual average of comments that are left. I spent like a good few hours going through each comment and replying to them and getting all of our thoughts together. And that's what helps to make this series so good because we're able to reflect, we're able to discuss, and we're able to come to the best conclusion. So even though I can't highlight all of them on the screen right here, a lot of them saying the same thing. Let's get that playmaker. Let's keep Dano, Miller, guys like that on thin ice. We'll keep them on a short leash and we'll see what the off season has to offer with the money that we do have to spend, which is not very much. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get the off season going. It's our first off season at the helm of the Vancouver Canucks and it's set to be an exciting one. We'll want to make a big splash, but the question is, will we have to wait for free agency or can we make some moves right here, right now? As we see the top 10 picks are not up for grabs. Pick number 11, the first one that a team wants to trade. So picks 11... Wow, and, and like 19. So 11 and 19, and 11, 19, and 20. The only three picks up for grabs within the top 20. So if we pick at 25, I don't know if it's worth it to trade up to 19. I, actually, I would say it's not worth it. We'd have to trade up to number 11, and that's a bit higher than I would have wanted to go. Let's sim to like, let's sim the top 10 or the top nine first, just to get a better idea of what we're looking at. So Iserman goes to the Senators with the first overall pick. They jumped from ninth to first. Macklin Celebrini goes second to the Montreal Canadiens. I would love to see that. Then the Kraken get the medium elite, another medium elite to the Predators. Then medium elite Berkeley Catton going to the Blues. The Sharks, lots of medium elites in the tops here. Demidov, of course, Dickinson. And then finally, we'll look at how. So here at pick number 10, if we were to trade for pick number 11, we could probably get, I don't think we get Kivi Haru. I'd be surprised if he dropped. It would probably be Cole Hudson, brother of Lane Hudson. We could go for Cole Hudson, but we already have a left D offensive defenseman in Quinn Hughes. Purala could be interesting. Timu Purala, medium lead two-way forward. We have a lot of two-way forwards. I'd love to get more snipers, power forwards, playmakers. We have a lot of two-way forwards. Even though he's NHL ready, I don't know if I like that. If we were to trade up for someone, and even like a Ginla Caswell, like if we had pick number 17 and got Caden Lindstrom, a medium top six, who's a power forward, six foot four, I'd be okay with that. But I don't know. If it means trading up from 25, and like essentially we're saying no to O'Brien and yes to someone else. So if we're saying no to O'Brien so that we can trade up and get Caswell or Paraskak, that would be one thing. But to trade up for 11, like we'd be, we could, I'd rather trade for 13, 14. Tarek, this is a tough name to pronounce. Uh, Tariq, I would think. Tarek or Tariq? Paraskak. So he, I don't even, we haven't even scout him. We didn't even scout him. I didn't bother scouting the top, top players because I was busy trying to get as much done on the lower end players so we could find some gems and stuff like that. So he wasn't even scouted, unfortunately. I would assume he's going to be medium elite if Aginla and Caswell after him are also medium elite. Is he a playmaker or what? I don't know. He's a right winger. But here's the thing as well. It would require us to take our first round pick and more. I don't know if I want to trade and more. I'd be very happy getting O'Brien. Usually these guys at from 20 to 30 are all the same 65 overall medium top six. They're not interesting at all. Time's running out now, so I'm just going to go ahead and let the Kings take their selection here. Is it Kivi Haru? Yes, it is. So it's not your average... 
you know, 20 to 30 range where you get all medium top six forwards with 65 overall. This guy, well, I went to, wait, where am I, where am I? This guy, O'Brien, is one year away with supposed A-plus shooting, fully scouted. That could be like four and a half stars. So that's the thing. It's not like we're having to say we trade up or we trade down. We could stay exactly where we are and get a very good prospect who's on our team within a couple seasons. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards doing. We could even take our first round pick and look at trading it to look at acquiring a guy like William Nylander. As we were saying, if we want to just acquire his rights as opposed to waiting to see if he drops to free agency. A first for William Nylander would likely, yeah, this would go through for sure. A first for Nylander. But Nylander, I had looked earlier, he scored 112 points this season with Austin Matthews who won the Hart Trophy. This would go through. We could even maybe get a little bit back. So Nylander would be great to acquire, but to pay him 10 million and to pay Pedersen 10 million and to pay Heronic 7 million there's 27 million I believe that's I think we have like 28 million to play with in extension dollars there's everything I'm not even thinking about put Coles into the rest of our depth on our team so would it be would it make sense to have Nylander go from one team like the Leafs to another team that we're creating like the Leafs as well can we really dedicate that much money to those few players and Kuzmenko needs a deal after next year Besser needs a deal after next year even if we let Besser walk Kuzmenko's going to want a few more million. I would love Nylander. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know if the money's there. To have 10 million to one player when we've already given 10 or will give 10 or 9.5, whatever, to Pedersen with like 2 million in or two over 2.5 two million in buyout this year and over 4.5 million in buyout next year. I think in under normal circumstances, I would say let's go for it and deal with the repercussions later. But because we've inherited such an abysmal cap situation in the Vancouver Canucks, we need to be a little more conservative and allow ourselves to use that money over the course of multiple players and not just go all in on a couple. I think we got to take the safe route here. And unfortunately, the position that we've been put in by Vancouver has forced us to have this outlook. So there's my explanation. I think let's go to 25 and just take O'Brien then. Uh, oh, you know what? I just got so lucky. I just got so lucky because O'Brien's uh, 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 ranked 25th and I just simmed to pick 25. He could have gone at 24. I should have traded up for one. I just got so lucky. Hudson goes to the Islanders at medium elite. Purala ended up being 78 overall medium elite. But let me see. Yeah, this is exactly what I thought. A well-rounded two-way forward. That's not really what we're looking for right now. We have that in our lineup already. I'm not saying that we don't want a player like Purala, but I'm saying if we were to use our first round pick and more to trade up for him, we kind of already have guys like that around. I'd rather try and get a playmaker, a sniper, a power forward, especially if O'Brien has A plus shooting. So Paraskak was a medium elite, 71 overall sniper with three star shooting. Aginla, medium elite, Caswell, medium elite. So it hurts to not get a medium elite in the system, but to be able to have had our solid season and still get a good prospect at 25 and have more value to try and get other picks later in the draft, that's very valuable. Because if we use, let's say a first, a third and a fourth to get that Purala kind of player, now that leaves us without a third and a fourth to trade up for a guy we wanted in the second round, for example. So Caden O'Brien will be our selection. Let's head up to the podium. With the 25th overall selection in the 2024 NHL Entry Draft, the Vancouver Canucks are proud to select from the U.S. development system, Caden O'Brien. Welcome to the team, Bello. You are there! 72 overall medium top six! That was a weird... Usually the game... Uh, maybe NHL 24 and the PS5 is different. Usually there's a little uh, loading and then he pops up. But he's right there! All right, Caden O'Brien! Sorry for the anticlimactic reaction. 72 overall medium top six power forward. Let's see that shooting. Let's see that shooting. Give me at least four stars! three and a half but you know what those are it's not a fake three and a half where he has 79 accuracy and 88 power these this is a good three and a half where it's all 85s across the board i can deal with that plus keep in mind that he is a year away it's not like he was nhl ready he is a year away 72 overall at 25th overall i think that's very good value caden o'brien distant relative of miles edward o'brien welcome to the team my friend 
I think that was the right move. It was the tough move to make, but I think it was the right move. But you know what? Speaking of trades, and then Muse go. We we're thinking about getting Muse, but then he goes next. We don't need really an offensive defenseman, I don't think, at this time. Speaking of trades, let's go ahead and see if we can acquire some rights to players. I was thinking, you know, it's if it's between Reinhardt and Teravinen, Reinhardt is one overall higher. I think Teravinen could be cheaper, but I do really like the storyline of Reinhardt being from Vancouver. Plus, the Hurricanes, I think they have the money to resign. I was looking, yeah, I, you know, they have, it's gonna be tight. You know what, probably not. I think both the Hurricanes and the Panthers are in really tough spots. Ooh, really tough spots here, because the Panthers have to resign Forsling, Montour, Reinhardt, uh, Lundell, and they don't have much money. Same for the Hurricanes, they have Natchez, Pesci, Teravinen, Shea, Jarvis, D'Angelo, so a lot of Hurricanes may drop. So you know what, worst case, I say we can go after Teravinen in free agency. If it's gonna cost us like almost nothing to go after Reinhardt, who maybe the team, the, the Panthers would have re-signed him, but now they can say, we'll re redistribute our efforts elsewhere. If we can get Reinhardt for whatever, a sixth, and then Teravinen also drops, we can reevaluate that later on. But let's say, uh, probably, can we get even, no, probably a sixth makes sense in terms of trade value. Uh, oh no, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. Do you want like, uh, do you want Pia Suter or Tucker Pullman? Do you want one of those two? Uh, you want both, eh? But Pullman makes more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you Tucker Pullman. So this gives the Panthers a third pair D who's locked in, who they're not gonna have to scramble for with their a lot of names going out the door right now. They get a third pair D for 2.5 million. They get a sixth round pick in exchange for a guy that they're gonna lose for nothing. So Florida, what do you say to this guys? All right, trade accepted, thank you very much. So Ram Sam Reinhardt's rights now belong to us, but we'll see what kind of contract he's looking for. I think if I remember correctly, he had, he had scored something like 70 points. Let's see, 29 goals, 44 assists. 73 points in a full 82 game season. He had a solid year with only 15 power play points and a good amount of ice time. He has some X factors there to boot that will help for his chemistry. So there you go. Sam Reinhardt hopefully has a playmaking right winger and we'll see what happens with Tara Vinen. Now, here's something that I did not touch upon at all. I just mentioned it a little bit from Tic Tac's comment. We're also thinking about the top four defense because on defense right now, on the left side, it's Quinn Hughes and then number two is Carson Soucy at an 82 overall. Carson Soucy's good, but I don't know if I want to rely on him to be our first pair of guys should Hughes go down to injury, for example. So a name that I was looking at, I looked in the player search earlier for some left-handed defensemen, especially ones on expiring contracts, and Noah Hannafin's name does very much interest me. The Flames and the Canucks do have a history of trading with each other as well, or just players going between the two teams. Noah Hannafin is an 85 overall. I'm not sure what kind of money he'd be looking for, or if we can even afford him, honestly. We could trade for him and he becomes nothing, but I think I want to at least go for it. I want to send a seventh round pick to the Flames and see what happens. In the first year draft, if there's ever a time to trade a seventh, I hate trading sevenths, I love my seventh round picks, but if there's ever time to trade one, it would be in the year number one draft. So it looks like the Flames would do this. Could I even get a seventh back like next year? Could we swap sevenths to make this happen? What do you say here, Calgary? No, okay, so I have to give you just, just a seventh. We might not have the money to make this work, but I need to see what they're asking for first before I can make that determination. So Hannafin may end up going to free agency, but I think it's worth the seventh to see what happens. So Calgary says it's an absolute no-brainer. Thank you very much. So Hannafin, we now have the rights to Hannafin and Reinhardt, but we'll see what happens if one or both or neither end up getting signed uh, on, during the re-sign phase. So let's keep on simulating here. Some good players going at the end of the round. Some to the end of the round, actually. After O'Brien, we see Muse. We see a few other medium top sixes. Hellenius was one guy that a lot of people had mentioned in their comments. Hellenius being a medium top six, 72 overall playmaker. I don't think he would have been a bad option either. Just O'Brien was too tempting. Again, under normal circumstances, he probably would have been the guy. But O'Brien was a generated player who just really spoke to us too much to say no to. Misa and a couple other uh, medium top sixes there. Do we want to look to trade into round number two is the question now. We could look at a medium top four defenseman here at the beginning of the second round. There are a few here. Even a couple of medium top six forwards. A low elite and this guy Mikhail Lindholm. Uh, medium top six Justin Poirier. There you go. Classic. He's a gem. Or we could go all the way to the 80s. Our pick at like 85. 
Uh, and we could get one of these low top six guys could be there. Daniel Burrish or Valery Yakupov. Even medium top four defenseman here in Johan Edler. Maybe a relative of Alex Edler. So I, you know, do we trade up? We have two third round picks, I believe, eh? So do we trade up one of those thirds and then keep a third? We could try that. Because we only in our system, we really only have uh, Willinder in the defense. So I wouldn't mind getting another one. Would we want to go for Leon Mugli? Mugli Mugli, who's two years away, a Swiss defenseman. Anthony Cristoforo, who's an offensive defenseman and two years away. Uh, Viti Vaisenin, 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 who's two years away, two-way D. Or would it be Thomas Galvis, who's three years away? It's probably one of the two years away, guys. If I look at strengths and all that, uh, probably the 18-year-olds are probably a bit more developed here. Mugli is 17. Mugli, <laughs> I feel like I'm Mowgli. I feel like I'm is what I'm saying. In A minus league, in a C minus league, an A plus league, all three of them are pretty interesting here. We probably go for the two way D though. And you know what? Actually, if I'm gonna make this happen, I gotta do it quick. Uh, Seattle, do you want to trade your pick? Now you know what? Let's let Seattle make their pick. They were a really bad team. They lost the draft lottery. They'll probably want to use their pick. If I want to trade with the Jets and try to give you, let's say, 89. I'll keep 85 from the Mikhaev trade. I'll give you 89. Can I give you, like, Pia Suter to, to clear up some more money here? Can I give you Pia Suter with pick 89? Now they have more than that in that 20th case, or probably not. Might not work. Can I trade you some other picks I wouldn't trade at the end of this draft? Fifth, sixth, seventh. Third, fifth, sixth, seventh. Yeah, let's see that trade. Bang! Let's go. There is not really anyone at the end of this draft that interests me at all. I did my pre-scouting. It's just we have no one really scouted, and it's just it, it doesn't work for us. I'm not going to take random shots on guys who will have low bottom six or AHL potential in the year one draft. So Mugli goes to the crack, and he was a 68 overall. I'm going to say let's go for the fin here. VT Vasinen, who is 18, six foot one, lefty, right D from Kuku Kovola in Liga. Two years away, A minus shooting, must bulk up a little bit. Let's get him in the system. Let's go. Another defenseman on the team. And he is 67 overall, medium top 4D. Good to have him in there. Thank you very much, VT. Happy to have you on board and looking forward to your contributions to the team. Now let's go all the way to pick number 85. And with that pick, we'll take one of those low top six guys. Uh, they're both here. Fantastic. So Valeri Yakupov, six foot four, two way forward, who is three years away. Nothing really stands out. B shooting. Or we go for Daniel Burrish, who's a power forward, a minus shooting, also three years away, low top six. Uh, probably Burrish. I like the shooting a bit more. Another power, another USA East power forward to add to O'Brien. So Caden O'Brien and Daniel Burrish, two USA East power forwards. Welcome aboard. 63 overall, low top six. I think according to the strengths and weaknesses, I wouldn't be surprised if Yakupov is a higher overall, but I think I just like Burrish more in terms of his simulation probably. So yeah, there you go. So Yakupov was a 65 overall, but one and a half star puck skills and defense. Yeah, same for Burrish, but the two and a half star shooting, uh, I don't know, actually, neither of them would have been bad. They seem pretty similar actually, more than I thought they were. So Burrish was the guy. We'll see what happens in their careers. We'll see if Burrish and Yakupov ever cross paths again. Our next pick would come at 121. Edler was interesting as a medium top four gem, but he is five years away, so he would guaranteed be a guy who's like a 50 overall and likely never grow, especially as a defenseman. There is Svensson, Jorgen Svensson, medium top six, but again, five years away. These are trade value kind of guys. I'd really ha rather have people that we can foster the growth of and get into our lineup ASAP. Those trade value guys that you draft are more for later on in franchise mode, I find. So no one really speaking to me here between now and our next pick. So we'll probably sim to our next pick and then we just trade down to whatever guy we want to actually take. So we'll go to pick number 121 and yeah, low top six Ds, low bottom six forwards. Those are the guys, those are the guys who are going now. We could go for a medium backup. Yeah, not really what I, what's ideal. Probably a medium starter actually. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, so I think we'll go ahead and trade down. Do we want Bobby Stoll or Brandon Terry? Uh, Bobby's a year younger. Uh, both are five years away. Yeah, that's what I imagine. I uh, may as well go for the guy who's rated higher. So Bobby Stoll will trade down to like 160. Seattle, can I get two sixths for a fourth, basically? What do you say to this? Rejected. Woefully insufficient, of course. Other way around, they'd be laughing me out of the room, but of course. So how about a fourth, a sixth and a seventh for a fourth? Rejected. A sixth and a seventh for a fourth. Is that not crazy? Is that not crazy to you? 
Can I get a seventh in 2027? How about that? It's still rejected, of course. So forget it. Just, what are you going to do? I'm going to go ahead and take the guy then. Bobby stole at 121. I'm not going to trade down if it's not going to get me anything. So let's go ahead and take him. Bobby Stoll from USA Central, 17 years of age, medium starter potential, 51 overall. Not the worst overall for a 17-year-old, but and you know it's not medium elite, but medium starter, not bad to throw in the system and just see what happens. So there's the draft, ladies and gentlemen. No one else that really speaks to us in the draft class, mostly due to A, it being year number one with a lot of real prospects, and B, just not the greatest scouting done in, in this first season. So I'm sure there's a lot of other good players that we'd be missing out on, but it would literally just be shots in the dark we don't want to do that we'll just try and regroup for next year's draft and for now i think i'm content with what we were able to do so the draft has come to an end we got o'brien vasenin burrish and stole four more prospects and all four of those prospects are ones that i'd like to see grow and make this team not just trade bait it wasn't just potential selections they were actual selections of guys we want to see so we'll advance a day now and we'll i'll take care of some of the scouts there all right very good and once i take care of those scouts we'll finally get into the resign phase Okay, you know what, EA? Well done. Well done. As you can see, the bio penalty at the bottom of the screen has now increased to 2.347 million, actually taking into account that the OEL buyout changes from year to year. I wonder if it'll get up to four or over four and a half next year. But thankfully, it's been taken into consideration. We don't need to factor it in ourselves. Our cap space of 27.833 million is our actual cap space available with the $89 million salary cap. So you know what? Chapeau. Well done. All right. So let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen, starting with the obvious ones. Elias Pettersson is going to get his big contract here. He wants six years at 9.725. I think it would make sense that he definitely would want eight years. And if that's the case, 85% would bring him down to 8.9 million. We won't go that low. I'm trying to find a good middle ground here because I think Pedersen is close to signing in the real world. And whatever he signs for will likely be, you know, I, in my own mind, I'll put it next to what I signed him for. If I sign him for nine and he signs for 10, I'll say, ah, it's not realistic. It wasn't enough. But then if I sign him for 10 and he signs for 9.25, I'll say, wow, now I overpaid him. So I think 9.5 is fair, I'm going to say. 9.5 million on eight years for Elias Pedersen. The real world's one thing where he's like leading the league in scoring right now at time of recording. But here in the universe that we've created, he didn't even go point per game this season. So I think 9.5 million is a nice middle ground between reality and what he's doing in the sim. Eight by 9.5 for Elias Pedersen. Let's see what he says to that. Heronic, we're just going to qualify because he wants, yeah, 9.1. That's not happening. I'm going to try to get him down as low as possible. So for right now, we'll just qualify him at 4.4. Pud Colson, what do you want, my friend? 1.5, that's good. He stays as an RFA for three more years, actually. Because he had a good second half. He's moving into the top nine, middle six. Okay, let's go two years on Pud Colson, which will leave one more year of RFA left over if need be. And he didn't have the craziest season, so I won't go for the full 1.5. Let's try two years at 1.3, giving him 2.6 million. Let's try that. Let's see what he says to it. Uh, after that, most of these guys can just get signed on my own without having to bring you through it. The UFAs now. First, let's take care of our guys. Anthony Beauvillier, I would have liked to have kept him, but now with the money situation, what it is, and the lineup spots, what they are, I just don't think there's room for him. I won't release him yet, just in case there's a miracle that people aren't signing, but I think he likely walks. Same for Phil Kessel. We loved having him, but he was really just like a half year thing. If it so happens that we need to bring back a veteran scoring depth kind of guy, then he's our man. But for right now, we gave him his continuation of his career. We got him back in the NHL. He hasn't retired yet. He's still around. We did our duty. So fill the thrill. There you go, buddy. Tyler Myers is finally out of Vancouver after his $6 million contract has come to an end. He wants 2.275. He will not get it here. Tyler Myers, all the best, my friend. Finally out of Vancouver. I'm sure that felt good for a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans watching. Chatfield, I loved what he gave us this season, but at 2.3 million, we definitely cannot afford that for an 80 overall. So again, I'll leave him just in case, but I doubt it. Alex Edler, I don't think we bring him back either. Yeah, 38, he's going to continue to regress. Hard to, to find uh, an excuse to bring him back. Zaboro, what do you want, buddy? Zaboro wants... No, th 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 these kinds of guys will get league minimum in free agency in not too long. From and there's also Lafferty. What do you want, Lafferty? You want 1.4. He did pretty well this season. I liked Sam Lafferty this year. He had 18 points in 82 games. He was a steady fourth line pounty kill guy. So we'll come back to Lafferty. What we got to think about now would be the big dogs here. So Sam Reinhart, 73 points last season. We acquired your rights. 
Come home to Vancouver. What are you looking for? 8.825. Okay. If we go, yeah, we don't want to go much higher than that. And lower doesn't change too, too much. So if we go six years on Ryan, I don't know if I want to even go six years though. That's a lot of time. If we go five years at 85%, it brings us to 7.48. So if we go 7.5 on Reinhardt, let's do the math here. 27.833 million minus 7.5 to Reinhardt minus 9.5 to Pedersen. That leaves us with 10.833 million, essentially for Horonic, who we want in an ideal world to get him at like, what, 6.75? That leaves like 4 million for Hannafin. Yeah, and Hannafin, oh, uh, actually, hold on. Hannafin does not want a big deal here. Hold on. I was about to say, sorry, buddy, we gotta let you go. But if we could do, I don't want, defensemen are the one, ones that I don't mind going a bit longer term on because they want crazy money in the simulation when you go later. Five years on Noah Hannafin at 85% is 4.05. Hold on a second. So 4.058. So 4.075 for five years on Noah Hannafin. Let's see what Hannafin and, you know, let's even do Reinhardt because Heronix the one we could squeeze a little bit being an RFA. Let's go five years. That saves 25000 But let's go five years on Reinhardt and we'll offer him seven and a half million over five years. 7.5 for five. And we'll see what happens when we, when we advance a day here. So, and, and goaltending was okay. It's the Smith, eh? Was the Smith one? Uh, one point, that could happen. That could happen. All right, let's advance a day. Let's see now. Uh, offer was not enough from Noah Hannafin. Okay. Uh, boy, Reinhardt. Looks like the dollar value and the length, while Hannafin was more just the dollar value. Pedersen extends, of course. Easy, easy decision. And even put Coles in not enough. Whoa. Come on now, guys. So Reinhardt did not like the uh, 7.5. I want, Could we go crazy? and try a one-year deal and then hope for it to be cheaper once he's on our team, like come December 1st, or that, that you now if he's better, that's also a risky move there. Hannafin did not like the dollar amount, but this is a great AAV that I'd wanna lock in. Let's try going to like 4.175 on Hannafin. And you know, worst case, we could always, we could still move out uh, Pia Suter. So that would free up a little bit more money as well. Reinhardt, we're gonna go five years at 7.75 then. I don't wanna play around too, too much. Or even 7.65, extra 150K for both those guys there. But Colson also is an RFA, we can wait on him. So let's advance another day for both these guys. Uh, scout signs on, very good. Two scouts, Sergei Datsuk, all right. Not enough from Noah Hannafin and not enough to Sam Reinhardt. Hmm, I don't wanna have to compete in free agency, but if they start asking for too much, into free agency numbers, then, you know, then may as well wait for free agency. 7.85 on Reinhardt. They want extensions. 7.85 on Reinhardt. Ah, oh, boy. And let's go 4.25, I suppose, on Hannafin. Advance another day and see. What do they say? Not enough and not enough. Yeah, I, I'm i sorry, guys. I can't go crazy here. Meanwhile, let me take care of the... Before I go all the way to July 1st, let me take care of the rest of the team and then we'll come back to the big dogs. So I released some fringe players who wanted like 1.2 million, but DeSmith, I think I'm going to offer him the 1.6 million, even if it doesn't work out and we have to end up trading him. DeSmith at 1.6 can equal Pia Suter at 1.6. So for a backup goalie at 83 overall, that's a good price. So hopefully he wants to sign it. If not, I'm sure there's other good options, but I wouldn't mind keeping someone who was already in our system to begin with. Back to the UFAs now, Reinhardt and Hannafin. I don't think we can go much more. So I'm going to try to do one year at 8 million for Reinhardt and try to convince him that he wants to stay and then we can ex extend him in December. But if it's really not working, then we're gonna look at Teravainen or somebody else in free agency. So one year, eight million. Let's see what Reinhardt thinks about that. And Hannafin, we're offering him good money here. So I guess 4.5 for five years. He'd be a top four defense, but he's 85 overall. Let's advance another day and see what happens here. Okay, all right, Noah Hannafin's on board. There's that left side. I was really more concerned about the left side D than anything, because even if Reinhardt doesn't sign, there will be other playmakers in free agency. So Noah Hannafin for a seventh round pick. Thank you very much. 4.5 million for five years. Reinhardt's on board, one year, 8 million. Okay, so that is gonna hurt us a little bit this season, but really the money is gonna be the tightest next season. So it works for now. It works for now. DeSmith, it wasn't enough. Dries says there's too many players and his, what's in the depth chart? 
Uh, sell I thought I gave the right offer. All right, for sell. Okay. So that leaves us now with 8.398 million. Beauvillier is definitely going to have to walk at this point. So good luck to you, my friend. It was a pleasure having you. You came from the Bo Horvat Islanders deal. We'll, uh, we will release you now. Chatfield, same thing. It's just too expensive, so we'll release him as well. Dries, buddy, come on. I'm going to give you... I'm giving you as much as I can give you. 975. One year, two way. You'll be 13th forward now. We let a lot of these guys go. And Sam Lafferty, I liked you this season, but it might be too tight. It might be too tight. What's up with the RFAs? Let me just, uh, do I qualify uh, McDonough? No, I think I'm going to release McDonough. Uh, and your moment to release as well. But the rest of these guys I'm going to qualify, we'll take care of later on. And just finally, the goaltenders. So we'll definitely have Silovs qualified. I will also offer him a two year. I offered this same deal for three years at 975K, but he guess he didn't like that. So two years, 900K at two way to keep him uh, RFA eligible. And then finally, Casey DeSmith, final offer to you, Casey, before I just have to let you walk, will be one year at 1.75. And worst case, we just trade you no problem. So let's advance another day now. Easy decision from Casey DeSmith and Dries and Silovs are okay. And that leaves us with 7.473 for Hronik and put Coles in. I don't think that's enough for Lafferty. I would have liked to keep him, but I don't think that's enough. So Lafferty, we'll have to let you walk, my friend. And we'll take care of the RFAs once we get into free agency here. So main roster, goalies are all taken care of. All right. Worst case, we still make more moves. Suter still moves out. DeSmith can still move out. And then starting on July 1st, we can also look at Kuzmenko uh, and Besser getting extended ASAP, which would help to alleviate some of the problems and questions that we have. So we'll advance a day to begin free agency here on July 1st. I'm going to go into the staff free agency and check out new scouts and coaches in a moment. But first, let's see who's here in the free agent pool looking at all the ufas who are available so pavelski kane Toffoli, they want big money uh, uh tarasenko wenberg wants a lot uh, tara vinen wants five by six essentially so yeah it, we would have been cheaper than than reinhardt so we could always just sign tara vinen and then maybe trade reinhardt to the panthers for a seventh just to retcon it but i don't know tara vinen three by six that wouldn't be bad or even later, 5 by 5.95. I wonder if other teams would be interested in Teravine. Because he had good totals, despite the only 37 games played. He was scoring 32 points. He was on a very good pace. Not quite 70-whatever points. But if Reinhardt wants 8 million and Teravine would take, like, maybe 5, that's a big difference. So you know what? I'm going to explore that. Let's just do a little, you know, a little uh, spelunking here. Let's try 5 years at 5.5. If he likes it, he'll sign it. If not, he'll sign with somebody else. But Teravine, I'm going to extend the olive branch to you, 5 by 5.5, to save us 2.5 million this season, and probably about 2 million in the long run. Reinhardt would be great for the story, but if he wants long-term 8 plus million, we just, I don't know if we can afford that, especially with what uh, Kuzmenko might be asking for. So 5 by 5.5, let's see what happens. Let's also check out the extensions now. Just out of curiosity, so let's see. Besser, currently making 6.65. He wants 5.85, which is very good. I'm glad that he would take a little bit of a discount. If we can give him 85% right now, that's 4.97. So if we can give him 3 by 5 today, that would be great. He just scored 67 points, though, which was a career high. I, you know, In, a, in the real world, he'd probably be wanting around 6 but his demand is not very high. He he's down to an 85 overall as well. I say let's try going 5.25 for three years on Brock Besser, saving like 1.4 million by getting him to sign for that amount. And then Kuzmenko, oh, we can't even offer the extension yet. He's up to an 88. We can't offer it yet. And Hoaglander, what would he be looking for? 1.1. Yeah, we could do that now. I could do two years on him now, which would be 1.31. So two years at 1.35 on Hoaglander. I wouldn't mind doing that. And then anyone else who needs an extension will come back later. So, okay. And then to the RFAs right now, Heronix demands on July 1st are, oh, they've, oh no, not that they've come down, just we don't have the money. Yeah, so we'll figure out, but, oh, but for one or two years it changes. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. But Colson, how are your demands looking? It's not that they're, they've changed, it's just that he was being a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit difficult before. So we'll come back to these guys later. Let's go back to free agency and see who's out here. Because I stopped, I got sidetracked here a little bit. 
looking at the UFA. So Teravinen, if he wants 5x5.5, we'll probably retcon the Sam Reinhardt deal, because in the real world, we would have known that. We would have reached out, we would have uh, put out some feelers, what are they looking for? Is Reinhardt open to coming here or not at 7 million? We would have known that already. So that's why we kind of got to retcon some things in this universe. Eberly, Barabanov, Pacioretty. I don't know if there's any forward we'd really go for. If anything, it would probably be defense if we didn't have Hannafin. So good thing we did get Hannafin at 4.5, because Forsling would have been here as a more offensive guy for 5.5, or we would have gone lower for like an 83 overall guy. Yeah, so I'm very content with the Noah Hannafin pickup then for what seems to be here in free agency. And goaltending, we see Samsonov out here, at even Marc Andre Fleury. If we sort by UFAs with potential, anyone out here we can throw in the AHL? Maybe McLaughlin here, Veselainen. Our AHL team was not great this past season, so I wouldn't mind throwing some guys in there if we can find some. But not really the greatest pool, I will admit. So McLaughlin, why not? He's the youngest, he's only a 73, but let's throw him in the system, get another, another center in there for the middle six, now that we lost a few centermen in our AHL system. Let's see if he wants to sign it. If he doesn't, not the end of the world. And I wouldn't mind, actually we need an AHL backup, even maybe even a starter if Silovs ends up getting called up. So if we sort by two way and then sort by potential, we could look at Stauber, even Olivier Rodrigue, 23, 73, that's not horrible. Yeah, why not, let's do it. Sachenko didn't really have any potential, so let's throw him in there. We could do, uh, yeah, let's do two years on him. Olivier, why not? We won't have uh, Bobby Stoll coming in the system just yet. So a couple of contracts sent out. We'll see if Teravainen likes it. If yet, yes, we'll make some moves. Right now, we can also check out the higher staff screen. Any coaches out there that we could consider? Yes, okay. Who's this guy? Josh Anderson? Who's it? Jerry Anderson. Good old Jerry Anderson. 46% team fit. Oh my goodness. Horrible fit for Quinn Hughes, who's our first pair defenseman, but he's an A-plus coach. What team was he on? He got fired from uh, the Devils. They just won the Cup! The Stanley Cup winning coach, Jerry Anderson. Oh, there must have been... Oh, yeah, it says Stanley Cup and awards won. There must have been some sort of storyline there. Jerry Anderson available in free agency, but there's also other A-rated coaches. These two here. Graham Moss, who has a better fit, and then even Bob Clapperton, classic. So maybe this is the guy, Graham is the guy who has a better fit with Miller and with Hughes. I, I'm more concerned with the Hughes fit. Or, oh, you know what? Did we finish with Hughes on the third defensive pair to end off the postseason? That may be why. Oh, that might be why, huh? So maybe we just go for the best coach then. Maybe we just go for the best coach. He has better power play as well. Yeah, Jerry! Let's go, buddy! The Bruins and the Blues are also interested. So NHL head coach, I'm going to give you eight years. I'm going to give you as much as I can give you. Budget remaining is 460k, so I'm going to give you as much as I can give you. Let's try like 8x8 eight eight on Jerry. 8x8 eight eight to be our head coach. And if I go to our coaching staff... I can demote this guy, NHL goalie coach to AHL assistant coach. There you go. And then uh, our associate, our assistant can become goalie. And then this guy can become assistant. This guy can become associate. And then he becomes interim NHL head coach. All right, so let's see what happens there with uh, what's his name, with uh, Big Jerry. And I think we're ready. Actually, I'll check out if there's any scouts that we can sign. And then we'll advance a few days. Okay, moment of truth. Let's start advancing a few days and see what unravels. Let's start doing it. I'm very curious to see. Uh, Jerry! Jerry, Jerry, Jerry off the St. Louis Blues. All right, we'll have to look elsewhere for the coach. We got a couple more scouts signing on. All right, so coach, unfortunately, there is the first domino to fall here in the offseason. Did not go our way, but there are other coaches available. And of course, the other A-rated coaches went. No problem. But you know what? This guy, Damian Ramirez, looks interesting. A- minus rated, and he has a better fit with Dano. We need to have a, a coach who fits well with our second line guys. So two A- minus rated guys left. Actually, this guy has really good attributes for everything except for the coach influence of B-. minus. Damian Ramirez, 57% uh, fit. Ooh, this guy has a really bad fit with Dano, which we need to have improved. So you know what? Maybe Damian Ramirez is the guy then. Damian, let's go, buddy. Damien Ramirez, that does save us in the coaching budget, just in the storyline wise, so the owner should be happy. We'll pay this guy like 2.5 million as opposed to the 8 million that Big Jerry wanted. So unfortunate that he's A minus rated versus A plus rated, but we could still live with that. It's, you know, A minus is fine. It's more the fit with that second line that really had to be changed. So we'll see what happens with Damien as we continue to advance. Another scout signs on, very good. Now here's where the big decisions are being made. I'm gonna reject your offer. You've not offered me as many years as I offered you eight years. It says years wanted eight, I gave him eight. I, think, I guess he wanted four? 
Oh my goodness, this system. Oh my goodness. Hoaglander extends, very good. Olivier Rodrigue signs, very nice. McLaughlin signs, okay, so a few decisions made there. Let's go back to the higher staff screen. Don't you dare tell me. Damien, okay, he's still here. No one interested in him at the moment. Okay, I'll give you your four years, Damien. You wanted, I gave you eight years. I'll give you four years instead. Less security and less guaranteed money, no problem. 2.5, there you go, for four years. Oh, these guys, huh? Real drama queens. Let's keep on going. Here's the moment of truth for Tara Vinen, and he's not going to be coming. All right, he did not accept the offer. It was not within his consideration range, but he has not signed yet. Besser extended, very nice. All right, Trevor Moore being offered to us for an interesting package there. So let's go back to free agency. So Tara Vinen is still available, it seems like. Uh, no one's interested in him, but it wasn't within his range. So we still have 7.473. We've got to consider Hironic. We can't wait too long on him or else his demand will really get wonky. So right now he wants three years at 7.775. And 85% of that would be around 6.6. .6. I want to go a little bit lower if possible. And then uh, put Coles in. We could uh, take care of him now. As he should have a better attitude. 1.325 will do for two years on put Coles in. All right. But it may fit. It may just fit without having to do anything. Moving out Reinhardt and getting Teravinen for two million cheaper would be nice, but it might not be necessary. I don't like having to retcon things if we don't have to, so it might not be necessary. I would want to see what Heronix demands come down to. Let's advance a few more days to see, just make sure that we get our coach here. All right, really start off on the right foot. Blah, 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 blah. Damian Ramirez, welcome to the team, my friend. Okay, Tom Wilson being offered to us. Sheesh. But I think the move here is to stay the course. If we need to end up moving Reinhardt for whatever reason in the future, that's one thing. But like I'm saying, I don't think we need to do anything. If Reinhardt can stay happy and we stay the course paying him 8 million until December 1st and we extend him, let's say for 7.25, I don't mind paying the extra 1.25 million or the extra 1.5 million as opposed to Teravinen to be able to have Reinhardt, who is a higher overall, who does seem to score more and who is also from Vancouver for the storyline and who we even traded for. So put Coles and signs on that. That's good. Uh, moving out Pia Suter might be the necessary move here as we now have 6.983 million, but we should have enough for this year. We should have enough for Heronic. The other RFAs, I'll go ahead and sign them now. I just wanted to wait a little bit. Ah, these guys want one-way deals? No, it's not happening. Studnika. Studnika was good, but I can't offer him what he's asking for right now. Carlson, he wants two. I could sign Carlson. I can give you two. Yeah, why not? Two years at 900k. All right, Carlson, there you go. And Jet Wu, good old Jet, we can give him two, yeah, we'll give him one year two way. There you have it. And Sunika is probably the Suter replacement because Suter 1.6 moving out will be helpful. Uh, Jet Wu's on board, very good. Carlson's on board, very good. Now we're at July 15th. Don't want to go too far. If we get into the July like mid 20s, Heronic will only want a one year deal and he'll no longer want a longer deal, which wouldn't be a horrible thing. But at this age, if we go beyond, yeah, he'll be a UFA after this contract. So I want to try and get it done now. So I think we'll send him his first offer. 85% of his three year ask is six and a half million about. So if we go to four or five years, it's just, it becomes too much. So we're gonna go three years at 6.5 on Heronic, more than we would have wanted to for shorter than we would have liked to, but at least it gets some signed for now and we can reevaluate in the future. So 6.5 and then we can have a better idea of what's going on with Studnika and whatever else. Wait for it, and rejected. Doesn't have an offer him the dollars that he feels he deserves. This is probably the last time that we can offer him a contract before he only wants a one year deal, so we gotta be careful with this one here. Uh, his three year demand has come down by a couple hundred thousand, which is good. Uh, we were offering him six and a half before. Do we go three years at 6.75? I think this might be like the max dollar before we just say, okay, forget it. We'll do a one year deal and figure it out later. So three years at 6.75 million. If he says no to this, we're going to say, forget it, do a one year deal and look at the extension in December. So we'll just, this is the last offer for a three year deal. Eamon signs on to the qualifying offer. I feel like another year with this franchise would be good for my career. So I gratefully accept. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, some wild offers here. No, thank you. Waiting for the answer here. Oh, extremely happy to accept your offer. I appreciate the fact you offered me the exact contract. Oh, length I was asking for. Thanks. There you go. You got your three years, Philip. Yeah. Coming off of a career year, you got your three year contract. If you really want, you'll be an unrestricted free agent in three years time, but we got you back. Okay. So that now leaves us with, including the OEL buyout, it leaves us with just over 1 million in cap space. So if we want to go and get our last, well, just Studnika left actually. 
Studnika, we don't have enough. Oh, we could do one year, one million, actually, probably on Studnika and keep him as an RFA. Yeah, let's do one year, one million. This is what the real GMs do, ladies and gentlemen. Really squeezing out every last thousand dollars. Just really going down to what we can do here. Making it happen to get... There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's the off-season. We have our squad ready to go down to the last, what, 798,000 with 36 contracts. So we'll probably sign a bunch of AHL guys. Next season, the bio penalty goes up. So we'll have to be very careful with that. We gotta try and get uh, Reinhardt for a little bit less. Let's get a good deal on Kuzmenko. And it probably means that a guy like Suter who's making 1.6 million now will have to move out so that some sort of rookie on league minimum comes in after that. So like, if we look at affordable and we see all the guys who are looking for league minimum, we could go after like a Kyle Pozo or a, like some veterans like Pierre-Edouard Belmar. But let's evaluate the lineup before we look at anything else and simulate to the start of next season. Looking at the forwards, if we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, it's not great. I wouldn't mind someone in the bottom six in the perfect world. Like if we actually, Pia Suter probably doesn't even make it. So if we could take Pia Suter and like maybe some sort of low draft pick, a third, a fourth, and get someone for like third line center, I'm not saying an 84 overall, but it's just someone to be third line center, unless we're staying Studnika's our third line center, I don't know. Because then our fourth line could be Di Giuseppe and Dries. That's fine in the system. Yeah, no, I doubt uh, Ratu comes up next season. Defense, one, two, three, four, five, six. Our sixth is Hiroshi. That's not ideal in the system. I don't know if Willinders are going to be ready. That's Maybe Willinders ready. Maybe he isn't. So let's get try and get a league minimum two-way deal kind of thing for someone who's like a 78 overall defenseman. And then maybe even consider a trade for a depth forward. Like Zaboral, who we had but wanted like one point whatever million, now he's looking at 975k. So if I try to get Zaboral, I'd have to offer him league minimum though. So that's the thing. So we could try and get Zaboral, but I don't think he wants that league minimum. We could bring in Roos, who was uh, just a Bobby Orr in the postseason against us. Three goals in the whole season, but scores goals against us in the in the in the first round. What about the forwards who are available over here? Cogliano has an 80 overall. Eric Stahl is still around here. Like, Eric Stahl could be a guy who's versatile in the bottom six, third line center, fourth line center. And was he in the NHL last season? No, AHL. 66 points in the AHL last year. Going on 40 years of age. He's still out here with top nine potential. So I'll take a good look around the NHL. If we find anyone that could be traded for, we'll go ahead and do so. But worst case, we'll just dump Pia Suter, sign like Eric Stahl and Zaboral, and then just move on with our lives. So I put in some work on the player search, and I believe that these seven players fit the criteria that we're looking for, for someone who could be a third line center, fourth line center, move around with Studnika, and be a solid presence in that bottom six. Of these seven, the one with the highest face-off attribute is Sam Steele. He is also tied for the, well, he's one of the youngest, I, I suppose. Still has medium top six potential. Maybe we can squeeze a little bit out of him as well, making under a million for one more year. I think Sam Steele could be a good option for us. So let's try and see if a trade would work with Dallas. They want Pia Suter, they're buyers. I think I'm just going to offer this one for one and see what happens here. Dallas, what do you say? Rejected. The value is very close though. So, and in the draft pick situation, we have a first, a second, fourth, and okay. I don't want to dig too deep into the picks. As I said, I love using those later picks to find gems. So we can always recoup a sixth and a seventh. I don't want to dig into fourths or fifths really. So a seventh should make this work actually. They want the seventh. Could we even swap sevenths and go crazy here? What do you say, Dallas? No, too far off. So the seventh should be enough here. Dallas, trade accepted. Thank you very much. Pia Suter, goodbye. Thank you for your service here with the Canucks. Sam Steele, welcome to the Vancouver Canucks organization. These are the small little moves that define a franchise mode, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully Sam Steele can do what we're looking for in that bottom six. And I think we are finally ready to simulate towards the beginning of year number two. So let's sim through the offseason and get to the beginning of the 2024 for preseason. So the off season's over. We've trained hard and eaten well. We are ready for year number two. I'm going to go ahead and check out the lines right now and how we may be looking headed into 2024-25. Hey, and apologies, I totally forgot. After we had acquired Sam Steele as the forward, I forgot we had to go back and get a defenseman. So Zaboral's now gone, but Lajoie works just fine. 78 overall, defensive defenseman, depth guy. Max Lajoie, we'll go ahead and sign him up. We can always look for a defenseman elsewhere, or there might be some other options, but just for now, it'll be good to have someone who's a 78 overall in the system. Okay, so here's how we are potentially looking to start year number two. On the top line, Kuzmenko, Pedersen, and Reinhardt get a plus four. Now that's with some really bad line fits, I have to say. When I look at these players and where they fit, Kuzmenko, half fit. 
Pedersen a little bit more than a half fit and Reinhardt about a half fit. So not the greatest fit on this first line with this coach, unfortunately. On the second line, more trouble. The X factors hold it up a little bit because JT Miller, not a good fit. Philip Dano about a half fit and Brock Besser about the same thing. So Besser, Dano and Miller get a zero for chemistry. Besser moves down from the first line to the second line, but Dano and Miller still stay on the second line. I would have preferred to have JT Miller with Kuzmenko and Pedersen getting a plus five on the first line with our old coach and then Reinhardt, Dano and Besser on the second line hopefully with some chemistry. So should we go back to our old head coach? That is the question. Miller, Pedersen, Kuzmenko plus five and the second line potentially a zero or do we go plus four and zero guaranteed with this coach? On the third line, Hoaglander and Podkolzin have both grown to an 82 overall which is great news and with Studnika as their centerman they get a plus two which is even better news. On the fourth line, Di Giuseppe, Steele and Eamon Aman, I'm not sure how I'm going to pronounce it, but I'll figure it out. On the fourth line with no chemistry, but not a bad fourth line. And actually a brand new fourth line, actually. So not too shabby. And Sunika is up to a 79. He gets the plus two. He still has some potential in the tank, so he could still see a little bit of growth. I like this for the bottom six. On defense, this coach does have a solid enough fit as Hughes and Hronik get a plus two. And Roy and Hannafin also get a plus two. Hannafin has a great fit on that second pair. And so does Hronik, actually, who would get a plus three if he played with him on the second pair. On the third pair, we have Susie and Lajoie getting a zero. Now, here are our options. As healthy scratches at the moment, we have Tom Willinder, who's a 79 overall. Do we play Willinder on the third D pair with Susie as a 79 overall who's going to be able to get top 6 D time? He is listed as a top 6 D. He's medium elite potential. He's 19 now after having played last season in the AHL. I would think that he likely gets a full-time spot here. But third pair NHL versus first pair AHL is a big difference in ice time. But he would get a plus one. We could add some special teams. I think Willinder likely sticks and La Joie is the seventh defenseman. Now for the forwards we have Atu Ratu who's up to a 79 overall, the former second round pick in 2021 who came over in the Bo Horvat trade from the Islanders. Two way forward, nothing that really jumps out at you. Three star shooting, 88 offensive awareness which is pumping up the overall a little bit. 68 shot blocking, two star physical. I'm not sure if it will be worth it. He's listed as a depth forward to put him as a fourth liner. Maybe we could squeeze him on the second unit power play. I'm not sure. Or we just put him in the AHL, put him first line center, and then Dries can come up as 13th forward in the NHL. And then Ratu, Klimovic, and Lekaramaki can grow all as our top players with potential in the AHL on the first line. So I would think, I would think Ratu plays first line AHL, and when Linder makes the jump and has a full-time spot as third pair D in the NHL. I'll give everyone a fair shot in the preseason, so let me know what kind of combinations you'd like to see, but I would think as of now, that's what I'm thinking. Goaltending wise, Demko at an 87, backed up by DeSmith at an 83, and in the AHL, Silovs is up to a 79, where I think he was always at a 79, but the Rodriguez is up to a 76. So good to note on the overalls there. So that's how things are looking with this coach. We can always consider changes. If we want to go back to our old coach, we can demote this guy, uh, Damien, to our associate coach and put Galena back to our head coach. Unfortunately, we couldn't get Jerry. Maybe he wouldn't have even been any better. Head coaches who are available, yeah, it's only B-rated guys left. So we're stuck with one of those two coaches. Do we want to try for the better first line chemistry and maybe Besser has a better fit on the second line? Worst case, it's still a zero with Galena. Or do we roll with Ramirez, who gives us a plus four with Reinhardt on the first line? Line. I don't know if I wanted Reinhardt to be a first liner though. I was more thinking he would be a second liner and that JT Miller who had a down 60 point season would finally get back onto the first line. So let me know your thoughts on all of that. I don't think there's any extensions to offer at the moment. No, we'd have to consider a Kuzmenko extension sometime in a couple episodes from now in the second half of the season. Ratu could get an extension now, but I don't think it would really make a lot of sense. We have 12.948 million in extension dollars, but I'm not sure if that is including the increased buyout that OE will have when it's over 4 million. But just Reinhardt and Kuzmenko alone would probably be even more than that is. So it's going to be very tight. It'll be very, very tight in the next offseason. I'm glad we were able to do what we did. I like the improvements that we made. I think we're in a better spot to start year number two than we were to start year number one. So I'm very pleased to see that. Let's go ahead and just look at the trade blocks from the NHL headed into the first half of year number two. If there's anyone who jumps out at you or players you want to keep note of, I'll start by overall sorting through each team. So Cam Fowler, Ryan Strom, some big names actually in Anaheim on the block for the Ducks. 
Coyotes have Schmaltz, Moore, Kerfoot, Tierney, and Bugstad. Alrighty. The Bruins have a good number of prospects there. Buffalo, Clifton, Labushkin, Chatfield. There he is. He ended up signing for three years at 1.87. And Zaitsev there in Buffalo. Calgary, a few prospects. Carolina has more prospects. The Blackhawks, prospects. The Avalanche of Guliev and Fairbrother. Over in Columbus, we see Severson, Corrali, and Goodbranson. Dallas has a few prospects there. Detroit, Cop, Comfort, Zucker, Patan, and Rafferty. The Oilers with some prospects, including Raphael Lavoie. Panthers, nobody. Kings, nobody. The Minnesota Wild, a good number here. Johansson, Foligno, Goudreau, Robinson, Lewis, Martinuk. A lot of decent depth pieces. The Canadians have Evans, Armia, and Kovacevic. The Predators, Dante Fabro, who is an RFA at the moment. The Devils have a good number of prospects. The Islanders, same number of prospects, but also uh, Hudson, who they just drafted, is on the block. Wow. The Rangers, prospects. The Senators, prospects. Most including some roster pieces there. The Flyers, nobody. The Penguins, prospects mostly. The Sharks, just Burrows. The Kraken, Tanev, Lafferty, and Kuhlman. The Blues, Shen, Saad, and Hakanpa. Hak Hakanpa. And then the Lightning, a few number, of, a few prospects there. The Maple Leafs, Yarncrow, Kampf, Foligno, and Reeves. The Vegas Golden Knights, prospects prospects, including Chaika, the Capitals, Oshie, Wilson, Backstrom, Edmondson, Jensen, Van Riemsdyk, and Myers. He found his way to Washington two years at 2.4. How about that? Uh, and then Lucius, McGroarty, some prospects, Lindstrom here for the Winnipeg Jets. All right, so some very interesting names around the league. We don't have a lot to trade out, and we definitely don't have a lot of cap space, that's for sure. If we look at our current trade value, it's, yeah, it's, uh, and, and looking at the entire team, it's Pedersen, it's Hughes, and it starts to drop off quite quickly. Still a lot of good mid-range value kind of guys. But as you scroll down, yeah. So if you're curious in seeing some values, O'Brien still at 72, then you can see them right here. Our draft pick situation is that we have a first, second, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So no third and no seventh at the moment for the 2025 draft. And we are fully stocked for 2026 aside from a seventh. And from 2027 onward, we are fully, fully stocked. Over in free agency, there are still some very interesting names, uh, some very, very interesting ones as UFAs. If we sort by overall, we see Nino Niederreiter, Verana, Boyd, Tatar, 82 plus overall guys, not making a lot of money. We could probably, with our cap space, we could probably sign Verana, Boyd, or Tatar. Where do they fit in the lineup? That's the question. Boyd, we had gone out and gotten Sam Steele. It's Travis Boyd, well, I guess he could have filled that role, but I like Sam Steele. Niederreiter would be too expensive unless we made some moves, but he is also still sitting here as an unrestricted free agent in September. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our first off season with the Vancouver Canucks taking care of the draft, the re-sign phase, free agency. The coaching is still a big question because we don't want the second line to be as negative as it was last year. I would think we likely go back to our old head coach because let's say we want the lines really to be like this, where JT Miller is on the first line and let's say Besser with the right shot, he'd be a left winger this season. Let's say we really want the lines to be like this. 3 0 2 0 on forwards, 2 2 1 on defense. If I just, you know, do a little save scrub here and get a different file going to check the other coach, Galena, we would actually maintain the plus two on the third line and go 5 0 2 0 for the forwards and defense 2 0 1. So the second D pair would suffer. Hannah Finn has a good fit on the second pair. But I guess Juan, not as much. I suppose not. If he were to be with Hironik, he'd get a plus one, and we'll endure nothing. So a zero on the second deep pair, but we get to have a plus five on the first line with JT Miller also getting his increased ice time. Meanwhile, yeah, not the greatest fits here on the second line. Even worse for Philip Dano, unfortunately. Like, no fits at all for him. So that is unfortunate. We could consider some X-Factor changes to try and fix things up. Brock Besser did have a career year, so do consider some X-Factor addition. If that's something you think that he deserves. But yeah, the defense also with the zeros on the second pair is not ideal. So keep all that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Do we make a coaching change between our head coach and our associate? coach do we want to consider any potential trades for players or prospects who are on the block do we want any other line changes or even certain line combos for the preseason that you want to check out who would you give an audition to and who could they possibly push out of the lineup so a lot to think about headed into the first half of year number two it was a successful offseason we made a 
lot of changes. We got Reinhardt, we got Hannafin. Two big holes are filled and we are utilizing the cap as much as possible despite the OEL buyout. So we're doing the best that we can. Thank you for taking the time to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and if you're excited for the commencement of year number two. And of course, as always, leave all of your thoughts down here in the YouTube comments or over on the Discord server, link in the description. And we'll go ahead and incorporate those into our next episode. And finally, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. The annual NHL 24 franchise mode guide just came out a couple days ago. I put a rush on it to say a big thank you to everyone for getting the channel to 7,000 subscribers. What a ride it's been and it's just getting better. The goal for 2023 was 7,500. Let's see how close we can get there before the end of the calendar year. So if you've been watching in the shadows and you haven't subscribed yet, I would encourage you now is the time to do so as the 2023 calendar year is winding down. So I'll leave you off there. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. I'm looking forward to reading all of your thoughts and seeing you again in the next one.